Happy NetSuite Podcast launch. Did that sound as nerdy as I think it sounded? Well, I don't even care because today's the day we're kicking things off and in the most appropriate way, we're diving into the genesis of NetSuite with none other than the brilliant founder himself, Evan Goldberg. You certainly won't want to miss his stories of the early days, you know, working in a small office above a hair salon next to a liquor store and his priorities for the company right now, as well as his advice for entrepreneurs and business leaders just like you. But before we get into all of that, you're probably wondering who in the world is coming out of your speakers or headphones right now? Well, my name is Kendall Fisher. I'm a NetSuite employee and your host. I'll be conducting most of the interviews for each episode, bringing on some awesome guests and co-hosts to discuss, you guessed it, all things NetSuite. You're listening to the NetSuite Podcast, where we discuss what's happening within NetSuite, why we're doing it, and where we're heading in the future. We'll dive into the details about the software and the people at NetSuite who are behind all the moving parts. We'll also feature customer growth stories, discussing the ups and downs of running a company and how one integrated system can help your business continue to scale. We want to thank our sponsors at Blue Microphones for enabling us to amplify our voice here at NetSuite. Everyone has a story to tell, and if you're a storyteller, you probably know Blue Mics for their iconic Yeti microphone, which has helped millions of people find and amplify their voices. In fact, I'm using a Blue microphone, a Yeti Blue Mic to be specific, in New York City. I'm based out of LA, and it's pretty cool that I get to travel with this mic and do podcasts from all over the country. So if you are thinking about creating your own podcast, check out Blue's new Yeti Caster, the complete mic and boom arm system ready to connect to your laptop, bringing the ultimate broadcast studio setup to your home or office. Visit bluedesigns.com and use code podcast at checkout for a special price. Hello, NetSuite listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And it's a great day to tune in because I'm fortunate enough to be sitting here with Evan Goldberg. The OG NetSuite Mm -hmm. employee. Can I call you an employee? The OG NetSuite employee. The founder of NetSuite, you guys. I think it says that on my my, my business card. Right. On your (laughs) non-existent LinkedIn. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And the current EVP of development. As we're launching this NetSuite podcast, you obviously, talking to you was our biggest goal. Because I think it's important to kind of set the tone for what NetSuite is. For the listeners that are tuning in that have no idea, that are working on QuickBooks right now and have absolutely no idea, or that literally just have a big idea and want to know where to go from here. And you had a big idea. Yeah, (laughs) I did. Um, You know, actually, it was sort of the culmination of what I'd done in my career. I'd always wanted to develop software. I did it when I was young and and through college. And I always wanted to build technology that would really help people in in sort of in their day-to-day lives. And, you know, I started at Oracle and I was working on a lot of projects to make powerful database technology more accessible to sort of everyday users. I left and started my first company, which taught me a ton about the challenges of running a fast-growing business and managing it and the sort of dearth of tools for those types of companies. And and those two kind of threads came together with NetSuite, which really is a super powerful service for your business to help you run your business successfully, but it's delivered in a way that, you know, everyday users can really take advantage of it. So that's kind of, you know, the day the day it started, it was sort of a five-minute phone conversation between Larry Ellison and I, and it, everything, just kind of the stars had aligned. And we figured out our sort of North Star in that phone conversation, which was, you know, a, a system built to be delivered on the web, starting with accounting, that delivers a whole sort of suite of capabilities to run a fast-growing business. And we stuck with that kind of North Star for, you know, almost 20 years. For our listeners that are sitting there thinking about going to one of their former bosses or current boss or whoever (laughs) about a big idea, how did you go about even starting that five-minute phone conversation with Larry? Uh, Well, you know, it was a pretty simple one because Larry (laughs) had been involved in my previous uh, startup. And I was sort of like, you know, I think I want to pivot to business software. I just see this huge demand out there. And he was just off and running. He's like, oh, my goodness, this is a great time to do this. This is what I, you know, startup that I would do right now if I could do it. And so it kind of just happened very naturally. But then you have the great idea, but then the hard work begins. And so we kind of saw over 20 years the sort of full arc, starting with 
you know, the four guys, they happen to be guys, um, <laughs> in a, uh, you know, in an office above a hair salon next to a liquor store. Oh, my gosh. And um, then the hyper growth, you know, when we, st- when we you know, got our service up and running, we got, you know, a lot of customers super interested in it. We had to rapidly develop the capabilities to satisfy those customers. So we, and we saw the hyper growth of both kind of our product development and our sales, you know, ultimately leading to us um, being able to go public which, you know, was a super milestone. But as soon as it was done, it was like back to the grindstone and and then ultimately becoming a company that does a billion dollars in revenue. That was really exciting. And then, you know, the, the, the kind of the next stage was coming back to Oracle. We are, you know, obviously had a lot of connection with them in a lot of different ways. And it really was sort of the right time, you know, to merge the things that we were doing with what Oracle's doing. And that's sort of where we are today. Right. And I want to get in, we're going to get into the Oracle acquisition. Mm -hmm. I have two questions though. First of all, how did you build the relationship with Larry that he was involved in your first startup other than just working at Oracle? You know, it's actually kind of, (laughs) it is kind of a funny story. I mean, you know, when I I was at Harvard and uh, my sister, worked at Fidelity, which is my older sister. It was 1986, and Oracle had just gone public. I was really into the Mac and Apple, and I really wanted to come out to California, and I felt that Silicon Valley is where, you know, everything was happening. And uh, she said, well, you know, if you're going to go out there, don't go work for Apple. Go work for this company, Oracle. And I had no idea what Oracle did at all. And she said, this guy, Larry Ellison, he is on to something absolutely huge. You know, Oracle that year had decided they they had never really hired from Harvard before. Harvard didn't have necessarily a reputation of great computer science, even though they invented one of the first computers. But just a little, <laughs> just a little crimson plug there. Hashtag humble yeah. brag. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, so that year, like Oracle decided, oh, we are going to hire a bunch of. They got one guy that they really liked from Harvard, and Larry's like, okay, well, let's get like everybody from Harvard. Uh, of so, course, yeah. So um, Larry interviewed all the engineers. So I interviewed him. You know, we hit it off. I think he liked that I'd won some math contests, and so <laughs> um, you know, he really helped track my career at Oracle. You know, he's been an amazing mentor over thirty plus years, and uh, so yeah, I mean, relationships are huge in life. Yeah, right. I mean, I I get, I mean, I'm not a Harvard grad, but I'm a USC grad and I get the, you know, the networking has been incredible and that that is an incredible story and it goes to show you that even back in your college days and the relationships you you make back then, well, Mm -hmm. can influence your whole life because today he's still a mentor, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Second question, less serious. (laughs) Did Was there any correlation between the four men who were working at NetSuite and the fact that there was a liquor store and a hair salon? <laughs> you know, it, I would not say it, that, that the, the local businesses, uh, first of all, they weren't exactly our target market, so we couldn't necessarily go down and say, well, what do you think of a you know, business service delivered over the Internet? <laughs> the main influence that they had is that the... Um, the salon played very, very loud music. And mm. so one of our employees really liked it a little quieter, and he would consistently be like banging a broom on the floor <laughs> to try to get them to turn the music down. So that, was, that, kind of, that, was, that was kind of the influence. <laughs> that was pretty much the only influence we had. And, you know, we grew very, very fast. There was an apartment next door that was supposed to be lived in, but soon enough we had, you know, people living in the, working in the laundry room. <laughs> and, oh, my god! And so then we moved to... Um, you know, we pretty quickly moved to where we are now in, in San Mateo, and we stayed there for, you know, we've been there for 17 plus years. So when you watch shows like Silicon Valley, are you like kind of creeped out by how similar? It's hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. I mean, it's obviously um, exaggerated for humor, but there's yeah. <laughs> there's definitely a modicum of, of truth in there. I mean, the crazy stuff that happens there didn't really happen to us. We had I guess a somewhat boring but successful trajectory as as a startup. So I mean, we had fun, but um, you know, it was it, we we were really. I mean, we were on to something. We were riding the crest of a very big wave. At the beginning, there was a lot of skepticism about putting your business data on the internet, and yeah. I mean, certainly Salesforce dot com pioneered that idea for sales data. But we were talking to a different audience, typically the operations and or you know financial leaders of a business, CFOs, etc. A kind of you know genetically cautious bunch. Yeah, of course. And so you know that took a little more convincing. Though I would often say, I know you think that it'd be bad if if someone got your financials, but if you're willing to put your sales data, your critical customers on the internet, which is really the jewels of your business, then you probably should be comfortable 
with the other aspects of your business being on the internet where they actually will be far more secure because we have a team to make sure that the stuff is really locked down and you have like a computer in your closet that, you know, has coffee spilled on it and that any employee can go in and put a thumb drive in and, and grab everything. So the, the, we were able to sort of ride the wave as people became more and more comfortable as sort of a next generation of leaders came in that were really more comfortable yeah. with the internet. And, and now it's not even a, a question. Can you remember one of the first customers that you were like, it doesn't have to be the very first, but like a customer that you were like, oh my gosh, we got them. Like we, we convinced them that this is the right move. <laughs> there, you know, there have been great customers through the years. I mean, a company like GoPro, you know, what they started, they, basically on NetSuite. So it's great to see a company that grows uh, quite large um, starting from scratch. We serve a very large number of customers right. and it's great. Every month I get the go live reports of the customers that are going live across so many different industries doing really incredible things. And, you know, they'll turn into the Spotify's and Snapchat's yeah. and all the, you know of the of the future. Crazy. Do you have a favorite? I know that puts you in a tough spot, but do you have a favorite? Well, my wife has a company that sells reusable shopping bags. It's this amazing system <laughs> to, that you know <laughs> to help plug. to eliminate plastic <laughs> from the world, and wow. she runs it on a skeleton crew with her partner of two people. And all the orders get shipped. That automatically comes into NetSuite. They always have real-time visibility into how they're doing, building a connector to Amazon. They're kind of living the life of the entrepreneur that has to deal with multiple channels, that has to figure out how to deal with Amazon, which presents, obviously, a threat and an opportunity. So, And I am deeply involved in the NetSuite implementation. So I'd say that's probably my favorite company because I get to see it, you know, Yeah, I was about to say. Up. And as Larry calls it, my plan B. <laughs> there you go. There you go go. How is that working with your wife? You, do you have to, is it like more it, stressful? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's great actually. And, um, you know, she's a big believer in NetSuite. She always has been. She was a, you know, she got it from day one. She was a huge cheerleader for us and the company over the many years of really, really hard work. The year that we started NetSuite, I got married and had a baby. So, oh, I mean, it's been like actually my daughter who's now 19 kind of grew up I could like look at her and say oh NetSuite's a teenager now but not as snarky <laughs> <laughs> I know the teenage girl years all too well obviously that's hilarious I'm sure she really loves that being compared to <laughs> your yeah. other child NetSuite yeah, exactly. um, okay so diving back into we, we touched on it earlier and it is a big topic of conversation even though it's been two years it is still a big topic of conversation and that is the Oracle acquisition you know you talked about how it's come full circle and, and it really does have NetSuite has Oracle roots because of you. Being the person who's been here since day one, how has the Oracle acquisition affected NetSuite and what does it mean for the future of NetSuite? Yeah, I'd say two things. The first thing is that obviously we were, you know, we were sort of a cousin <laughs> and they were very, I won't make a joke about marrying cousins, but um, <laughs> they were very familiar with our business and what we, Mark had spoken at Sweet World, Mark yeah. heard at Smoking at Sweet World, and obviously Larry, you know, was very, was involved deeply at various points in the, in the business. There weren't a lot of surprises in that regard, and they also knew what worked, mm -hmm. and they've kept what worked consistent. And so we work together as a team very similarly to how we did when we were independent. So that's part one. Don't fix what ain't broke. Right. But what they have been able to do is to allow us to scale very quickly in, in areas that would have taken us so much longer as an independent company, kind of, you know, with the sort of quarter by quarter scrutiny, et cetera. And, and just the fact that they already have so many resources in these various areas. So kind of three things that we've been able to scale quickly. Number one is we've been able to scale our product development more quickly. I mean, they're investing heavily in a, in a lot of these, you know, really critical reinvention projects that are going to, you know, make NetSuite as, as vital, you know, in 15, 20 years as it is today. So that deep investment is, is, is part one. Part two is global. Oracle has this amazing global footprint that would have taken us decades to build. I mean, they've been building it for 40 years. We can immediately sort of tap into that to get NetSuite to countries, to geographies, to, you know, organizations, businesses that, you know, don't have anything like it available. Mm -hmm. And there's just no cloud you know, solution available there. And so that's in some of these emerging economies, India, Brazil, 
China. Also lets us just more rapidly go into the advanced economies of, of, of Europe, like France and Germany. So, you know, we can do the localization of NetSuite. We can do the translation. That's all easy. But actually having presence in those countries, having the, lo- you know, the understanding of the local customs, but also having the ability to, you know, just get out and talk to businesses and, 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 and show them what we have, what sweet success can deliver very rapidly for them. That's a huge, huge advantage. So that's, um, that's this kind of the second part of where we've been scaling. And then the third part is scaling our use of Oracle technology. So the ability for us to really, really optimize NetSuite for the latest version of the database, to take advantage of pluggable database technology, for example. I think that's going to provide great performance and other types of portability benefits for our customers. Oracle's cloud infrastructure, that's where we're going. That's the future of hosting NetSuite. We are true believers in the vision of utility computing. You know, these services that know, that understand deeply how to run an Oracle database and Java application, which is what we are, with the utmost effectiveness and working really closely as they scale that effort and being a big part of that effort. And really, it's trans- a big transition for us. We had to do a lot of that stuff ourselves as an independent company and the ability to leverage Oracle for that instead so we can really just, you know, focus. It's kind of the same message that we give to our customers. So we tell our customers, don't worry about dealing with technology and trying to make it work and dealing with upgrades and and, 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 and trying to get different systems to work together. We'll do that for you yeah. so you can concentrate on your business. Well, that's sort of what Oracle is telling us. Don't worry about plugging in machines and the cables and the power and where you're going to put them and, and the contracts with, you know, run your business, make the best possible business service you can. So yeah. it's really an analogous uh, approach and a huge benefit for us to being part of Oracle. So for the the customers that are listening, even the prospects that are listening in who have, you know, heard rumors through the grapevine or whatever that NetSuite's not going to exist in a few years because of this acquisition. That's completely false. Well, in fact, I mean, Mark Hurd was so, so, so clear on that. The first thing he said when we announced the merger in July of uh, 2016, I believe it's coming on almost two years, was NetSuite will exist in the market forever. And all I can say is since that time, the dramatic increase in resources, the focus that we get at the top levels of Oracle make it very, very clear that this is a permanent uh, investment for them. Bringing it kind of full circle here, what is this like for you, someone who started this company, you know, out of uh, with four people, yeah. you know, above a above a hair salon? Well, what is this like for I you? Mean, to see? For me, you know, it allows me to continue to work with Larry and other, you know, people at Oracle. But that's something that was, you know, so that's continuity, and it's great, and you know, so that's business as usual. Mm-hmm. And it also, you know, it is it is about the people when I, you know, think about all the, you know, we've had a remarkable retention of employees better than ever, really. I mean, people are really loving the resources that they're getting and um, the excitement of, you know, how rapidly we're expanding internationally, how rapidly we're expanding here in the U.S. And so, the you know, I'm working with the same people and that's, to me, my team and what we can do together when we're committed is what makes it worth, you know, coming into work every day. And I, it, I'm glad and there's you, better food. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, and, and I'm glad you touched on that because why do you still come to work every? I mean, yeah. what what what's your favorite part of your job? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I always wanted to build software that would improve people's daily lives, and you know, I'm highly, highly leveraged to do that here. And so, why wouldn't I keep doing it? And and I have amazing dreams still for what we can do with NetSuite. And we'll probably talk a little bit about some of those yeah. things that we're working on and seeing those projects through and to completion and to success. And they are multi-year projects and being able to sort of reinvent NetSuite for the next 20 years, you know, that's gratifying. I mean, I can do that, you know, I can do one more kind of iteration of that. And then hopefully uh, some of the people that are in my organization will take over. But um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, you know, we really are kind of building the next generation of NetSuite. We are not standing still. We're not resting on our laurels and our success. And that's the most exciting part of it. And it's just as ex- it really is just as exciting doing it as part of Oracle in some ways more exciting. And I'm, you know, I'm charged up every time I come into work every day. That's all I can say. <laughs> do you ever still code? <laughs> yeah, I do. Actually, I oh. work 
worked oh on gosh. a little project that's coming out in our next release about giving uh, developers availability to the KPIs that run on dashboards so that they can do sort of unique things with that data. And I certainly keep track of the tools and, and, and how developers work and making sure that that our developers feel like they're working in a very modern environment. We look at the latest language technology. We look at the latest tools technology. So I like to stay very close to that and really understand what the developer experience is for the uh, all, you know, we're approaching 2,000 people working in the product organization. If you've ever met a famous athlete at a corporate event or gotten an official autograph, chances are Steiner Sports made it happen. Here's Brandon Steiner. We believe that there's magic in the moments that sports creates. We get customers closer to the game and help companies use the power of sports to grow their business. We've been in business 30 years and we've had multiple systems to keep track of all the athletes and all of our customers. Multiple systems means multiple headaches. So we made the move to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite lets us replace all of our finance, inventory, and CRM functions with one convenient system. Now all the departments can see the same data. And if I have a question about our business, I can get the answer quickly. This month, NetSuite is offering a free 60-minute business review with an expert in your industry to identify opportunities to turbocharge your growth. To get your free review, go to netsuite.com slash steiner. That's netsuite.com slash steiner. netsuite.com slash steiner. At SweetWorld, you mm-hmm. mentioned... Uh... Big trend word, big buzzword. Everybody yeah. that's listening right now is about yeah. to turn up the volume. Uh-huh. Um, you mentioned artificial intelligence. Yeah. What does this mean? And are robots about to take over the world? <laughs> <laughs> well, they will eventually, but um, we'll hopefully, you know, take good use of them before that. And we'll be nicer to them than they are in Westworld. So oh, hopefully good. they won't be super mad at us when they do take over. But we, should we pause for a, a big sigh of relief for everybody who's listening? <laughs> who's <concerned laughs> well, I can only speak that. for us, but we're, yeah, being, right, we're right, being nice right. to the robots. Um, no, you know, I mean, no one can be developing software for business and, and or for consumers that isn't thinking about this because there's there's so much opportunity. You know, a lot of these technologies like neural nets are decades old, and it's only been with the sort of proliferation of data and proliferation of computing power that we've actually been able to see how powerful they can be. And so anybody that's working in the sphere has to be conscious of this, has to be thinking about how it can have an impact. At the same time, you don't want to sort of overreach. And so we're, you know, spending a lot of time thinking about problems that are sort of eminently solvable, that really add value, immediate value to our users on a day-to-day basis, that, you know, problems that we can solve by looking at the data in new ways and analyzing what trends are in there, in the system, in the data, in the data of your business that we can leverage to help you run your business better. A really great example that I showed at Sweet World is looking at, all, in, in a service-based business, looking at all the projects. So it's really analogous in a product-based business, looking at all the sales and the orders, the orders that you're, because you know, orders are the kind of the heart of what a product-based business does. And projects are the, obviously the heart of what a project-based or service-based business does. Mm-hmm. Looking at all the attributes of those orders or all the attributes of those projects and figuring out which ones had problems, mm-hmm. whether they were you know, problems delivering the order, unhappy customers, what are some similarities there and can we predict when a project comes in or a project is midstream or when an, you know a large order comes in can we predict you know it looks like this one may need some extra attention and that kind of thing is immediate value to the customer it just helps them deliver better on what is kind of the heart of their business so those are the kinds of problems that we're looking at trying to solve using you know this next generation of ai technology oh yeah just like minor problems not, <laughs> nothing super you know yeah. just the, <laughs> just the heart of your business right that's exactly all. that's all that's <laughs> all but um in other than ai uh what are some of the other emerging technologies that suite is looking into for yeah. example buzzword everybody um blockchain yeah, blockchain's an interesting one. You know, in the case of AI, we're really diving in. It is so obvious to me that, uh, and I think it's obvious to everyone, that there is uh, enormous value. We don't know quite yet exactly how it's going to be delivered. Um, you know, blockchain looks very promising, but it doesn't necessarily, we don't quite understand the immediate impact. And what so what's great about technologies like that is that we're going to work with Oracle 
to enable access to those technologies to blockchain services, for example, through Oracle's blockchain service to our developers, to the thousands of people that are building NetSuite you know, applications on top of NetSuite, extensions to NetSuite. And they're working very, very closely with customers, sometimes with particular verticals. And I think that it's there that we're going to see some specialized vertical applications that use blockchain, some intercompany commerce types app, type applications in a particular, you know, vertical or a particular kind of ecosystem. And so that's what I expect there is that that, you know, the use of blockchain is going to be led by developers that are going to, you know, help figure out what are some of the great use cases. Because again, we don't have our customers saying, please add blockchain in NetSuite, <laughs> right? It's, and so in some sense, it's not as far along as some of the AI technology, but it's really interesting technology. And it'll be great to see how our developers take advantage of it. Yeah, it is. It's all, it's all very exciting and great. It feels like, it feels like things are moving faster. And I'm I'm not, I, you know, I'm 28, but I, and I saw so things have moved fast pretty much my yeah. whole life, but it feels like now things are moving the, faster than ever. The, the acceleration of technology is relentless. It's just a, our business to keep up and figure out how it's relevant for our customers. And NetSuite is keeping up. Absolutely. And they're keeping up for their customers. And that's what I love, you know, just a, a, about our messaging in general is really what our customers need and our customers first. And, you know, we've mentioned Sweet World a couple of times. And for our listeners that are, that are listening right now that don't know what that is, Sweet World is our big customer and partner conference that we throw once a year. Typically in April, it was in the Bay Area for a while, and the um, last two years has been in Las Vegas. It's full of lots of fun and excitement. I saw Evan play the drums, which mm-hmm. was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, that was, that that was, was nerve-wracking. <laughs> <laughs> we had a massive like rock show one night, and everyone's there. It's huge. And Evan got on got on the drums there. A couple and, songs. Uh, yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty awesome. Fun. It but was super fun. It's not just all play. It is work, too. I, I, I opened for Ludacris, actually. I mean, uh, <laughs> another hashtag humble brag yeah, but that was exactly. pretty awesome i mean <laughs> ludicrous it, it, it the, the whole night was and i put in air quotes ludicrous it was it was really fun but it, it wasn't all play there was work and a lot of what you talked about was, you know, customer first and um, the, you know, the, this theme of growth um, and NetSuite helping businesses grow. It's kind of our end of, of the fiscal year kind of cherry on top, I would say. Mm-hmm. And we're moving into fiscal year 19. Mm-hmm. With all of this in mind, thought you know all of the new technology that you just talked about, and you know the the theme of customer first and helping them grow. What else can our you know prospects, anybody that's listening, look forward yeah, to in the yeah. next year? So one of the things I talked about at Sweet World was the fact that we and I've mentioned I mentioned this earlier. We're really sort of continuously reinventing ourselves, and we're not afraid to try something in a totally new way. Several years ago, we decided to reinvent our commerce capabilities from the ground up, and that's what led to Sweet Commerce, which now is coming out in sort of its full form, you know, kind of accessible to all of our companies um, that want to successfully transact on the web and interface with their customers on the web, which is increasingly, you know, every company. So that was a deep, deep investment over many years that's really coming to fruition. And we're not afraid to do that. Our BI tools, our, our analytics capabilities, that's something that our customers have said again and again, we'd like to see you sort of unify. You have several different ways of getting the data out of NetSuite, which is why do we have these systems? It's so we have visibility into our business and we can make changes based on that, you know, based on the data. We want to see you unify some of these capabilities in a next generation, you know, kind of analytics platform. And that's what we've done. And that's coming out in this next fiscal year. I demoed it at Sweet World. We've gotten incredible, incredible feedback from people using it. The ability to very quickly point and click, analyze, slice and dice to get the key information that helps you make great decisions in your business is something that, you know, there's a ton of excitement about. And we're really excited about it. And again, it's, it's the, the product of many years of investment. Product development aside, what is on the horizon for NetSuite as a company? You know, again, some of it is continuity and what you've seen in the past, you know, just continual streaming in of these new great capabilities for your business while keeping the service running seamlessly. It's the last ERP or business system upgrade you sort of ever have to do. And that's been what we've been doing for 20 years, and that's what we're going to continue to do for the next 20 plus years. Some of it is continuity. But and there's th- comfort in that, before, yeah. not to cut you off, but there's <laughs> comfort in that. I mean, yeah. like we just talked about with technology and the acceleration of technology right now moving at, at the speed that it's moving, it's knowing that you've uh, implemented a program that's that's going to remain what you yeah. at its core what what you signed up for. Right, but there will be whole other areas that we reinvent again. Con- continuously listening to our customers, they have an opportunity right in the system to tell us 
what they think. And we just added that recently, right on every page. You can just say, I like this, I don't like this, and maybe why. Really, really quick feedback for us. And we're going to collate that and look at that and say, where are the problem areas? And so I think continuing to try to get better at listening and re- listening to our customers and to reacting to what we learn, that's sort of the, that's sort of the future of NetSuite. And why is it so important right now that we put the core focus on our customer? I mean, it's always been that way. Obviously, that's kind of what you built NetSuite on. But why now? We talk about this a lot internally, but also we talked about it at Sweet World about we are we're not Batman. We're Alfred. Right. (laughs) And why is that so important? right? That's absolutely true. I mean, we exist to help other companies achieve their dreams. And that's our dream, (laughs) you know, and and especially as we've really got our focus on these fast growing companies that kind of hit an inflection point and all of a sudden they're like, whoa, I can't operate the business the way I need to given what's happening in my market and and, and the impact that I at least have the opportunity to have. And getting those businesses over the hump of their hyper growth. And but it's not just that. It's businesses that may be going through a variety of different types of transitions and and say, you know what, I need I have to better track this transformation. I have to better implement this transformation and, and a system like NetSuite can help me. More than ever, we, we are going to be dealing with more and more businesses, doing more and more interesting things. And so we have to get very systematic about trying to understand all of them and do that in a way that we make really good decisions about how to make the service better. So that's just, you know, again, it's about listening systematically, finding new ways to learn. We are we have something in my group called Field Trips mm-hmm. um, where we take some engineers and people that might not ordinarily be seeing NetSuite sort of in the field and take mm-hmm. them to companies that are doing really cool things with NetSuite or, you know, that maybe, you know, that and also organizations that might not even be businesses that are doing, you know, really cool things and getting them to see how people use NetSuite, what they like about it, what their frustrations might be, and taking that knowledge back into the lab um, when they're coding. And, it, you know, it provides both inspiration for why we're doing what we're doing, but also just practical knowledge about how we can do it better. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's incredible. I didn't even know that. So that's, mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. I like yeah. hearing that. Um, I, I learn stuff every day here at NetSuite, <laughs> but um, more than just technology, kind of t- talking more about what the human connection. And I think sometimes that gets lost maybe in, in, in the B2B world, that human to human connection. This isn't just to, you know, not robots talking to each other. Yeah. This is two humans with two dreams. You know, right. yours was to help other people achieve their dreams. And a big thing from the start with NetSuite has been social impact and giving back. Mm-hmm. Can you just touch on that a little bit? And then we'll dive into kind of what we're doing yeah. this year. Yeah. I mean, I think that increasingly everybody understands that there's a responsibility for companies to, to help in a lot of different ways besides just sort of increase the wealth of their shareholders. And that's always been a belief of mine from the very beginning. And we developed a program which is now called Oracle NetSuite Social Impact, which kind of has three components, one of which is we do software donations to small social enterprises and charities of NetSuite to help them do good better Mm -hmm. and help them see implement their dreams, which which are usually some amazing dreams about helping the world. And then we have the opportunity for employees to do pro bono work, helping those companies successfully implement NetSuite or, or be more successful with NetSuite. Again, a great opportunity for them to see NetSuite in action. In this case, you know, having a uh, significant social impact and learn, you know, they actually, it's a win all around. Employees learn about NetSuite, the, the uh, organizations get better use out of NetSuite and, and they, you know, they're more successful at their, at their missions um, if we're doing our job correctly. And then the third component is helping those organizations develop the capacity to ultimately help themselves because there's some degree to which pro bono can help, but you don't necessarily want to fish for them. You might want to teach them to fish. So those three components of this program, Oracle NetSuite Social Impact, have been incredibly successful and they're scaling just as fast as the other parts of our business. And, you know, we had a, a great organization at Sweet World, Alex's Lemonade Stand, that's doing some amazing work for childhood cancer research. And, and we've been able to help them succeed um, by, you know, Know, putting NetSuite in place and, and helping them successfully implement and use use NetSuite in their organization. Yeah, and how much did we raise for Alex's Lemonade Stand? Uh, well, I think that we did a lot of uh, p- of posts, and I think we raised fifty thousand dollars. That's that incredible. Cool. That's incredible. I mean, I get the chills every time we talk about it because it, it just the people that work for Alex's Lemonade Stand. Which for for our listeners that don't know what Alex's Lemonade Stand is, is it's a nonprofit that helps 
fund childhood cancer research. And um, it was actually started by a young girl, Alex, obviously, and she had cancer. And unfortunately, she passed away. But before she passed away, she she raised a million dollars for childhood cancer research. And so now her family has taken on Alex's lemonade stand and... They were one of them. Her brother actually was at Sweet World. And so we sat down and and talked with him a little bit. And we're actually going to Philadelphia to do a full video about Alex's Lemonade Stand, their growth story. And it's one of their biggest events of the year and talk about how NetSuite really helped them, you know, and and helped in their continued growth. And there's, you know, we've, we've, uh, there's over a thousand grantees that have been helped in that way. And um, some great stories and employees tell great stories of having been able to participate. We did something called a build a thon where we brought several organizations into our offices, paired them with engineers and other members of our development team, our services team, and they kind of huddled together to, t- for a day, each of them, and solved some sort of burn, you know, it's a burning problem that they, they weren't getting as much out of NetSuite as they thought they might, they could, you know, made a ton of progress in one day for each of these organizations. It was, you know, employees loved doing it. And again, they learned, they learned a lot in the process. So those kinds of things that we do in the sort of social impact realm, I think are sort of wins all around. They help the business. They help the organizations. They help the employees. It's great stuff. Yeah, it really is. Do you have a Do you have a favorite um, social impact or nonprofit story? <laughs> or or... I, you know, or social living. That's funny. Or, or organization. Again, yeah. I have several organizations that run on NetSuite. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> I have an organization that provides um, squash, the the racket sport and education for local youth after school program. Oh. It's called Squash on Track. It runs Love on it. NetSuite. <laughs> um, I I have. Uh, started my own cancer research foundation. It's called the BRCA Foundation, and that runs on NetSuite. So again, you know, I, I, it makes it sound like the only people I know that use, you know, use NetSuite are myself and my wife, but it is really great for me to get outside of the day-to-day development of NetSuite and see very closely the use of NetSuite in organizations that I'm very familiar with. But of course, there's some amazing, amazing organizations. I love Brightpoint Health, for example. They're in New York, and they ha- they do incre- they provide incredible services for people that really need it, for medical services for people that really need it. And they've scaled significantly. I think they have 22 clinics now from starting with one. And that's been, you know, another one of these sort of, you know, ground up from NetSuite success stories. And, you know, there's, there's just a ton of them. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's great stuff. There's so many people with a lot of energy to help. And, again, we're just trying to help enable them move further, faster, and more successfully. Yeah. If you guys want to actually learn more about the Bright Point Health story, we actually have a, a growth story on them on YouTube, on our NetSuite YouTube. So you can go over there and learn more about them. Their story really is inspirational and what they're doing is incredible. And it's it's so humbling to to know that our company help, helps them do what they're doing. It's Absolutely. pretty, and I can't imagine how it feels for you. So Yeah, it's great. Those stories, and they come, they just come yeah. every month. I see yeah. a bunch of them. You know, great entrepreneurial businesses, some has a dream and you can see in these stories that their dream is is working and that we're you know we're we're just a part of it we're just an enabler but it, it definitely makes you proud to know that you're having an impact in so many different spheres both in the business world and in the nonprofit world I'm sure you have a pocket no I'm sure you have a bucket full of advice you could pull from but if you could give our listeners say they're you know they're a four person yeah. company working out of a basement or a garage if you could just give them one piece of advice right now you'll be on in the future for plenty more advice but well, you know it's pretty basic. You need a North Star. You need a vision and you need to be moving towards your vision always. You'll have to deviate sometimes. And but every time you deviate, you really have to understand why you're doing it and and know that you're, you know, be conscious of it mm-hmm. and don't let it drag you too far from that eventual goal, from that vision that you have for your organization. And I think that's what we did at NetSuite. From the very beginning, we said we're going to develop a system. It's going to start with your accounting, but Ultimately, it's going to include your front office operations, and it's going to tie it all together in a suite. So information moves seamlessly. So this is one source of truth, and everybody's sort of working off the same playbook, working with the same tools. Deliver it on the on the web with a powerful platform that lets you customize it and tailor it for your particular business needs. That was our North Star and we knew who we were talking to. It was the fast-growing businesses. It might have grown, you know, that maybe the businesses got a little bigger as we went along. But ultimately, you know, we stayed true to that vision for 20 years, and, and that's the, num- the number one, um, I, I think, determinant of the success we had. 
And no matter what change, acquisitions, whatever, right. it remains the North Star. Absolutely. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Evan, for being with us here today. We hope to have you on several more times on this podcast. And for our listeners tuning in, make sure that you listen to our next few episodes, which which dive into some of what Evan was talking about, our, our international growth and some more advice from our EVP, Jim McGeever, on really how... Yeah, my boss. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> he said the same about you. <laughs> it's a circular firing squad. Right, exactly. Um, to, to Jim McGeever dives really into what it takes to, to grow your business today and how to prevent issues five or 10 years from now, what to do now when you're starting off. So make sure to tune into that. And again, Evan, we're so happy to have you here and we can't wait to have you on again. Thanks for having me. All right. This episode was made possible by our sponsors at Blue Microphones and Steiner Sports. So special shout out to them. Also thanks to Evan Goldberg, Everyone over at Lambstan, our friends and family at Oracle NetSuite, and you, our listeners. As always, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Until next time. You just listened to the NetSuite podcast. Be sure to tune in every week with more NetSuite developments, stories, and insights into the benefits of one integrated system to help you run your business.